cougar, puma, catamount, or panther. Call them what you will. Mountain lions are the second largest cat native to North America and the fourth largest cat in the world. The mountain lion occurs only in the Western Hemisphere and has one of the most extensive ranges of any land mammal. Here in Arizona, mountain lions can be found in every habitat type. The abundance of mountain lions in Arizona corresponds with the distribution and abundance of its major prey species, deer. Mountain lions are not an endangered, threatened, or even a sensitive species in Arizona, or for that matter, even in North America, with the exception of a small population in Florida. In fact, for a large predator, they're relatively abundant in Arizona. Mountain lions are secretive, shy, and elusive animals that prefer to remain hidden. They blend in extremely well with their surroundings. The very attributes that make them apex predators also make studying these big cats very difficult. While we may not see them very often, if you spend any time in the wildlands, they've seen you. Brian Jansen is studying mountain lion populations in southwestern Arizona. His study area encompasses almost 10,000 square miles. It goes roughly from the Colorado River border at I-10, east to Phoenix, south to Gila Bend, and then approximately south towards the Mexico border, and then returns to Yuma and follows the Colorado Rivers. Kofa National Wildlife Refuge is about 800 square miles and it is positioned between I-10 and Interstate 8, uh, roughly around Quartzsite, Arizona. Um, so that's our primary site where our most intense or mountain lion study is occurring. Adult male mountain lions down here in the low Sonoran Desert have home ranges that approach 1,000 square miles. And adult females have home ranges that are on the order of 100, 200 square miles. That's in contrast to what we find in an area that has a higher density of prey like uh, the North Kaibab Plateau. The North Kaibab Plateau, adult male mountain lions might have a home range of 200 square miles and a female home range might be on the order of 50 square miles. The secretive nature of the mountain lion also makes it difficult to determine just how many lions are out there. While the current statewide mountain lion population is estimated to be between 2,500 and 3,000 animals, the population is considered to be robust and growing. So January 31st, 2012, in the Kofa Refuge, uh, we knew that there were five individuals in the area. Uh, I suspected there might be one or two more, but uh, for the Kofa Refuge, uh, for this time period, um, five to seven individuals is a pretty honest, fair answer uh, from doing a lot of field work. Before you can study mountain lions, you have to catch them. To catch them, Brian uses two techniques. Uh, we scent trail them with trained hound dogs. That method is effective in certain conditions. Down here in the low desert where it's hot and dry, it, it's not particularly effective. Uh, however, we use them to recapture lions when necessary. Our primary method that is very effective in these low desert conditions is the foot snare. I will look for places in these mountain ranges down here that lions use. They have very subtle trails, um, but with a lot of searching, you can find the trails and set foot snares on the trails. Uh, and then it becomes a long duration of checking the traps frequently, every day, uh, pretty much for weeks on end. One way that we use to identify uh, routes that mountain lions use or specific trails is the trail camera. We have 30 or 40 trail cameras placed throughout the mountains that we use to not only identify mountain lions that don't have a collar, 
so that we know there is one in the area. But we also use them to evaluate particular routes. We know that they'll go to water sources or other places. But what I need to know is more specific. Will they pass by this rock, that rock, this bush? Or do they use this trail more frequently than another trail? So we use the trail cameras to, to identify those places. Uh, I've been putting trail cameras on the snare sites to record the behavior of mountain lions in the trap. For years, I thought when that snare would go off, the mountain lion would jump and run around. What I thought was going on couldn't be farther from the truth. Most mountain lions that I've recorded, they fail to recognize that they're even caught. The, the trap springs and, and tightens on their leg, and they go about their business like nothing's happened. They have no idea what happened. I've got them laying down, sleeping in the snare, but they are not struggling. When you approach a mountain lion, they'll struggle to get away because they naturally are, are, want to get away from humans. And, and so in that case, I, I try to dart them quickly because uh, I don't like to see them struggling. Once the lion has been sedated, a radio collar is attached and the animal is given the once over. Finally, the snare is removed and the animal is monitored while it rouses out of its drug-induced nap. Mountain lions typically hunt at night or during dawn and dusk, although they can be active during the day. These powerful animals are specialized top predators that hunt by stealth and ambush. So what do mountain lions eat out here in the wild? Well, they eat large prey here. They are eating desert bighorn sheep and desert mule deer. However, they're also naturally eating coyotes. We've got female uh, lions that just eat coyotes you know, like candy, as fast as they can. They also kill bobcats, um, badgers. I assume they are eating jackrabbits and cottontails too. Uh, those are very difficult to detect um, in, in terms of kill sites. One of the myths surrounding mountain lions is that they prefer steep, rugged terrain and high vantage points. Well, one of the really cool things that we're learning in this study is that's really not true. It's an artifact of where lions had been studied in years past. Well, we've got lions down here that use the steepest, most rugged terrain uh, that's in the state of Arizona, the Kofa Mountains. So we've got lions that use those areas. We've also got lions that use open environment, creosote flats. Mountain lions are killing mule deer in these creosote flats with hardly any vegetation. It's not steep and rugged by anyone's imagination, they've got the, we've got the gamut right here in our regional study area. Another myth is that predators take only the young, the weak, the sick, or the old. It's just not so. Most predators are opportunistic hunters, meaning they'll take whatever crosses their path first. A mountain lion is fully capable of taking a grown and healthy adult mule deer buck or a bighorn sheep ram. And yes, mountain lions, being opportunistic predators, can and do take small dogs, cats, and even livestock, especially in the urban wildland fringe areas. As long as we're busting myths, more fiction that needs to be shattered is that predators in general, and mountain lions specifically, are out there lurking, ready to kill every day. It just simply isn't so. In previous studies, mountain lions generally kill a large prey animal, like a deer-sized animal, on the order of one per seven days, one per 10 days. Down here in the low Sonoran Desert, we've got lions killing um, a deer from, you know, kills a deer and then it starts to hunt and kills another deer in three days. We've had them go uh, something like 21 to 28 days between known large kill sites. Loss of habitat from human development represents the single largest threat to the conservation of mountain lions in Arizona. Lions are secretive animals. Sightings of these elusive animals are typically rare. However, as we move further and further into optimal lion habitat, 
Encounters with mountain lions have become much more common. Life is tough out there for most wildlife. Mountain lions and humans, you know we can coexist. It's up to us to do our part by being aware of their presence and needs and by working to keep wildlife wild.